So, hi, it's Angela Treat Lion again. This is day four of the 10 day uh, post your work video challenge deal. And I'm laughing because this must be take number 4,533.3. <laughs> you know, I do something that I like and then I discover that something is wrong with it. So hopefully this one will get through. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, talking about your art if you're an artist. And even if you're not an artist, you'll probably be interested in this because one of the things that we're told as artists is that you got to talk about your work. And my belief is always, was always, uh, my art should speak for itself. I shouldn't have to talk about it. Well, <laughs> guess how many sales that got me? Big fat zero. Because there are some people who also can't verbalize about your art. And they look at it and they don't know what they're looking at. They don't know, really know how they feel about it. And they need some kind of a, uh, a gateway in order to get into the emotion or the idea of of the piece that they're looking at. And one of the things that uh, we are encouraged to talk about is how, does your, how is your art different? How, how does it stand out from other people's work? Well, we're so in it that it's hard to talk about it. You know, I'm so in it that I, I just drip it. And if I went down to the blood bank, they'd be mad at me because my blood's made out of red paint. So I, I find it really hard to say, oh, look at these colors and the flowing lines. You know, that's just not, not, doesn't come naturally to me and I have to really think about it. So I thought I would put together a little presentation for other artists and for people who buy art. Of, uh, some pictures of some artists that I admire and talk about them so that you can get an idea of what to look at look for and artists can get an idea of how to talk about their own art so let me see here let me see if I can find what I want to share here we go uh, this is the art of a guy named Mike Svob he's I really admire his work he's got such bold colors. Now listen to the words that I use because th this is how you set yourself apart and how you describe, you know, your work against somebody else's like traditional watercolors or something. This is acrylics on canvas and he's got very bold colors. He's got an incredible sense of light. Uh, he does reflections in waters beautifully. And what I really admire about him is how he uses great big, uh, swatch with a, a, a square brush. You know, a lot of brushes are pointed or rounded. And he uses a square ended brush. And you can see that, look at the, the stones here by the side of the river. You know, it's pretty obvious how, I wonder if I can make this bigger. No, I can't. Okay, never mind. Um, his brush strokes are just amazing. And when these little teeny tiny spots here, and here and here, these little gold spots, he does those with the corner of his brush. And then he'll take the edge of his brush and he'll swipe upward for the trees. He doesn't start at the top and swipe down, he starts at the bottom and goes up. And his colors are just so bold and bright. You know, it, make, it makes me want to just dive into that whole scene. Let's see here, here we go. And then this is one of his sketches. You can see where his, his strokes are really bold. And even though he's got detail like on the hands or the face, they're, they're very vague details. And once again, his sense of light, you know, it, this painting would be nothing without that lime green in it because it really brings out all of the other colors. So he's got an amazing sense of color and then this one here, that color really comes through. He's got a, an amazing sense of distance. You see how this little thing back here, it looks really far away. And he's done that using the illusion of these V shapes here. And in the distance beyond that, another mountain done by using a lighter color and then the lighter sunset. 
I just love his work. And if I were going to describe it to somebody, I would say bold, 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 incredible, brilliant colors and atmosphere that makes you want to just perk up and run in and dive into the water. It, I just mm, I love his work. Now, here's another person. This is the person I was talking to, actually. And we were discussing what makes his work different. And he, once again, you know, you just can't do it when you're in it so much. And I said, Gareth, you know, your work is so powerful. It's so simple and yet so atmospheric. He's got details ranging from uh, this little bitty detail on this crane back here to the uh, human shapes here. You can tell those are humans, even though there's not any facial or, or uh, description or, or details, you can tell that's a human. He's got the shadows coming towards you. And one of the things that I really admire about his work is how atmospheric it is. It, you, you know that's a, a misty day and his it's raining. That You've got reflection on the sidewalk here or the road, whatever that is. And, and he takes his foregrounds. Now watch carefully on the next one. He takes his foreground and just bloop, there it is, you know, a couple of strokes sideways and then the reflection of the building, the reflection of the people, and there it is. You know, there's no little ditty bitty grass uh, leaves or, or leaves or flowers or, you know, a lot of detail. It's just a single swath. It's just amazing and it creates all that space between you and these people back here. So the next one does the same thing. He's got this splurge in the, in the front and then just a few strokes. And there you are on this dirt road in Japan with all these people. And look at the light in here. Look at how even though it's cloudy, the light is just brilliant. He's got the reflection on the roofs and these kind of halo-y effect around the people. Uh, which are, you can tell those are human beings, even though you don't see any faces, you don't see fingers, and it's just the vaguest hint. You know, I call them human hints <laughs> because it, they're there, and, it, and yet he'll take a little bitty details, you know, like the joists on this roof or the edges of this roof over here on the right hand side, just to indicate that's a roof and that's the way it's been built. And that says to me, Japan, you know, it couldn't be anywhere else, right? The space in his painting is, is just fabulous. And here's another one, look at that. It, it, that couldn't be the Southwest. You know, even though the Southwest has uh, mountainous features like that, they're usually red or orange. That They're not this beautiful slate gray. And they don't have this kind of misty, even though it's a bright day kind of quality. And nobody dresses like, like that in the United States. You know, that's, look at the way the body is hunched over. And, you know, you could imagine this person in the, in the 1700s in a kimono walking down the street with that same posture. He's got the same lack of detail in the front with, a, with a just of the yellow and then da, 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 with, the, with the orange and the brown. It just creates a fabulous feeling of space. And then he takes your eye from the beginning all the way through on that path down to the mountain and over the hill. You know, you can imagine just walking over that hill. It's very spacious and so light suffused. So that that's Gareth's painting. I, I, can you tell I love his paintings? <laughs> so, and here's another person whose work I really love. Very, very different. Um, Angela Moulton, she has huge brush strokes. I mean, they're just enormous and they're so courageous. You don't see her making the stroke and then trying to blend it in. This is what I do. I blend stuff in. I'm the blending queen. And I've tried four years to stop doing that. I just can't. <laughs> There's something in me that just says, no, you have to blend that in. So she just takes her brush stroke and goes, zoink. Blah, 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 blah. You know, <laughs> I can just imagine if each brush stroke had a sound, you know, where this little dots would be beep, 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 beep. <laughs> and the, the yellow undertone, it just makes it so bright. You know, look at this, how bright this is. And she's taken uh, this 
wing here and she first she made the the blue stroke and then she made the green stroke and just went Whoa! and this is a bird you can tell all of these are birds but there's no detail there's maybe an eye with a white in it but just the shape tells you so i would call this work bold and bright and totally courageous look at this one you know, with, do, 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 with his little splatches and the, the brilliant blue head feathers on that and the bright pink background. Bold, bold, bold. And so perky and full of life. Oof. And here's another artist I admire, Anita Nowinska. A lot of people paint flowers, but a lot of them are simply 90% good imitations of life. What Anita does is take the life in her flowers and paints that. She doesn't paint the flowers. She paints the life in the flower. Look at the details she gets, you know, with the little crenellations along the, the petals and the distance between the inside of the flower and the tip of, of this little, I think you call it a stamen. She's got these beautiful lips coming down and a right up against a nice fuzzy background you can feel the life in that flower it is just so powerful i would call this bold but i'd call it silky and smooth and maybe even seductive because you really get drawn right in there and you really want to feel that flower petal she also uh zeroes down into a lot of detail but she makes it so that it isn't picky little nonsense details she picks the most essential parts of the flower that she wants you to feel and paints those you know she doesn't like in these leaves here in the upper right hand side she doesn't paint every single vein or you know line in the leaf she does a hint of the heart shape and she does a hint of the crenellations along the sides of these leaves. She does a hint of the spikiness of these kind of black flowers, just enough to give you the feel of that flowers and puts them together in this amazing bouquet of, wow, I wish I had that on my living room wall kind of feeling. And these are not little bitty decorative things. Look at the size of this. There she is, you know, with one of her paintings. These are big. These are, um, these are commanding artworks. I really admire what she does. And, you know, and the way she places them, her c composition is, uh, it, it makes, she choreographs these. Her color palette is, um, is really stunning. You know, she just takes it from very simple to more complex to very simple. It's just awesome. I just love these. So I would call her work once again, powerful and bold, but silky. And once, you know, I keep coming back to that word seductive because they pull you in and not in a sexual way, but just in a way of drawing in your consciousness, your awareness. And then I, I was looking at all these pieces because I was looking at my own artwork and I was going through to see, well, what does my work really say? What, what are things that I could say about my work? I would say it's also bold. It's full of light. Um, it's mythical. You know, I have forms that are completely unanatomically correct. You know, I don't care about anatomically correct. I care about the emotion. You know, what is she feeling? Where is she going? Is she excited? Is she going to get there soon? Look at her hair flowing out behind her and it's pink. I mean, who has hair like that? <laughs> you know, maybe a movie star. And she's got her little friend with her and the little friend is so happy. And what's the feeling behind the whole piece? It's flowing and it's, it's full of light. Same thing with this one here, freedom. Freedom and flowingness and flying. Ooh, three Fs. It's still mythical. There's no anatomical correctness at all. I mean, who has fingers that long? And who has eyeballs like that? <laughs> they don't, or hair like that. They just don't. But it doesn't matter because what matters is the thrust 
of the emotion and the feeling behind the painting itself. You can feel how elated that bird is to be free. It's going, wow, look at this, man, I can take off. And then this one here, it, it also shows the anatomical incorrectness where, I don't know about you, but I don't know anybody who's got a neck that long or who could <laughs> contort it down like that. And she's got all this wild flowy hair and this little boy with his great big eyes and he's going, telling her a story about the little wolf and, and the ocean and the mountains and the, and the hero. And, and look at those hands, they're way too big and her big fat arms. So you can see that, you know, that it's about the emotion. So when you talk about my art, you'd say, well, it's flowing and it's bold and it's colorful and it's full of emotion and these bodies that look really like they've been carved. You know, you can't tell Angela's a sculptor, right? <laughs> So I'm gonna to stop to share. That's how I like to compare art and compare the art to see how I wanna talk about my own art. And you know, it's funny, I, I don't think I could have used those words that I talked about before um, I saw all your comments on Facebook when I asked, you know, what is it you like about my work? You know, because those same words are in it. It's bold, it's colorful, it's flowing, it's, uh, uh, mythical, I think somebody said. So now you really, now you know, you really helped me out and I really appreciate that. And, and I hope if you're an artist or if you love art and you want to talk about it, that this will help you understand how to do that a little bit better. So this has been day four. I'll see you tomorrow on day five. Ta -ta -ta!